Hello? Am I audible? Okay, thank you. So, it was a very, very nice performance just before my talk. I think I like to keep the tempo as good as they kept it. So, I'll just start with my talk uh, by saying, are you Bhuvan Sri Lanka? And I, I went to the Lotus Tower. It was really nice. I, I'm, I like to visit a lot more places. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah? Okay. So my name is Vaibhav Malpani. I am a GD for cloud. I am also an organizer at GDG Cloud Mumbai along with Neeraf. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn, ask me any questions around this talk or anything else. I'll be more than happy to answer. And I generally re reply within a day. So I, I make sure you message. I'll definitely reply within a day. So, so the, I'll, before starting my talk, I'd like to uh, quote one of the lines by OpenAI. How, how many of you know OpenAI? Hello? Yeah. How many of you know OpenAI? Everyone? Okay, so the co-founder of OpenAI, right? He says, generative AI is the next big thing in artificial intelligence. It has the potential to revolutionize the way we create and consume content. I'm sure every one of you has used ChatGPT or Bard, right? How many of you use ChatGPT or Bard? Can you raise your hands? Right, so this, this uh, sentence is already true, right? It has already changed how are we con consuming content. If you have to write an email, I don't remember in the last one month, I have written an email without using BARD. I don't remember writing a LinkedIn post without using BARD for it. In fact, when I was applying uh, the CFP form, I just wrote the, uh, the title of the talk and the de description was given by BARD and I just copy pasted that and applied. So yeah, you can do that in, in your next CFP as well, right? So we have already changed how are we consuming content, right? So now the question is, how do you use this? Bard is something, it is with Google. Chat GPT, it is with uh, uh, Microsoft, right? You have to use your own code. Let's say you have to put this in your application. You have to modify it for your own application. That's not currently possible. You'll have to use through APIs. But let's say I show you ways to have it. How many of you know Python coding? Okay, so a lot of you know Python, right? So in, in today's talk, at the end, in the demo, I'll show you Python code, which directly you can use and uh, try out everything that you have to, right? So how was the traditional programming, right? So earlier, you used to say, okay, this is a cat. It has this animal, it has four legs, two ears, all these things. And you defined, okay, this is the meaning of a cat. Now, what happened in, in the 12, 2012? Uh, it was our, around neural networks. So we, we used to train it, right? This is a cat. This is not a cat. And then we say, is this a cat? And it, it is able to understand using neural networks. Now, generative language, right? So what has happened now? You just say, OK, read all these things about cat. And now tell me what is a cat, right? This is what generative AI models are doing in the, in the back end, right? It is trained on so many parameters, so many data. You just, it, has, it has all the data. You just have to ask it, and it will give it to you. So uh, this is one of the like a slide which you should try to remember. So it says ML algorithms can recognize, predict, and generate human languages. And the reason is it is being trained on tens to hundreds of billions parameters. Uh, earlier, I think Eric showed uh, all the number of parameters, right? Bard is trained on 500 million parameters, all these things, right? So what does it mean, right? It is parameters on which all things it is able to understand things and reply you back. So it, it's trained on billions of parameters. Billions is a very big number. So it's, it's really impressive to do that. LLMs are pre-trained on a large corpus of text. Like I mentioned earlier, you, you just give a pile of text and say, OK, read this and give me all the data. And what we call is LLMs can be called as large models. And what generative AI is, it generates based on those models, right? So these are two important things that have been recently, uh, you know, you could have heard. Have you heard about this prompt? If you, if you have, please raise your hand. I like to keep this as, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. So prompt is you, you say something to the, uh, the BARD or LLM model, and it replies you with something. But then there is a new field that has been come up, right? It's called prompt engineering or prompt design, wherein it's an art and science of, you know, you say something in a particular way, and in that way you get the correct answer. Do you agree with this? H have this happened to you? You give something else, and then you modify it to give more details, and it will give you a better answer. Has it happened? OK, thank you. So there are a few things that you need to know about prompt engineering. One is called zero-shot uh, zero prompt, wherein you don't give any example as to what kind of output do you want, and you just ask the question outright. 
Something you do on chat GPT is called zero prompt or on Bard. You it is zero prompt, you just ask any question, it will answer you. The, the next one is one shot prompt, wherein you just tell, okay, if this is the question, I expect the answer to be in this way. Don't worry, I'll show you all the examples for this as well, but just listen out for now. So you say, okay, for this question, answer it this type. You just show him one example, and in the next one, you ask this question, okay. So he'll answer you in a way which you have earlier told him. So that's one shot, and few shots is like one shots in, in multiple times is few shots, right? So what is Model Garden? Model Garden is one of the recent uh, services launched by GCP, and it is very good. It, it has uh, pre-trained machine learning models, and you can build and deploy AI models then and there. You don't have to go to anywhere, go to another service, download a model, put it here, there, deploy, whatever. You don't have to do all of those things. Go to Model Garden. Currently, they only have one click to uh, deploy models, but I'm sure they are building up every day as we speak. But there are other models in which you can open in Colab. You guys know Colab? If how many of you know Colab or Jupyter Notebook? Right, so a lot of you, right? So it will open in Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook. From there then you can you know use it. So it has a lot of types of uh, models, which is image classification, object detection, a lot of it, but I'll, I'll showcase uh, that more in my demo. So what is it used for? Like uh, everybody says, okay, I have used this, I've used that. Have you actually used it productively to do something, right? So uh, one of the examples in art and design, people are using it to generate artworks, right? Uh, there was one game, I don't remember the name exactly. They created their artworks just using uh, stable diffusion. So there's one of the model. And they have used that to create artwork. They don't uh, need to have a proper uh, UX developer or the game design developer. I don't know who does that, but they don't need that one, right? So that's a really good use case. They have saved a lot of money doing that. One of, one of the more is content creation. Uh, have you seen uh, that, that if you tell um, Bard that, okay, this write me a story about, let's say, three monkeys, something like that. And it will, it will just make up any story and will give it to you. You can just think of a concept. You just tell, write me a story about this, and it, uh, he will do it for you. So these kinds of things you could do. Uh, game development, I just now talked, then data visualization, I think in the morning, right, uh, he showed, uh, give me a vis visualization of, uh, of this data for the last five days in Sri Lankan, um, Sri Lankan weather, and it was able, easily able to do that, open in Colab, show it, right? So that's a really good use case. You don't need to know how to code that and do that. Good enough? You can shout, right? Everybody had a good food? <laughs> okay, so try to shout. Uh, nobody's going to tell you anything. Yeah, so I'll skip through all, maybe go through this as soon as possible, which is image classification. You can do, okay, this is a dog, this is a cat, all of those things. Uh, you can do text classification, wherein you say, okay, this is the article, tell me w which type does it belong to. Or you can do sentimental analysis, you give the text and tell me if it is positive, negative, or neutral. You can do question answering, wherein you just keep on asking questions one after the other, and it will remember whatever it has told you earlier. It will remember all the context, will, uh, will reply to you accordingly. Okay, so demo time. I'll Before I go to the live demos, I'll show you some photos. And believe me when I say this, this are generated photos. Okay, so uh, there is one model that I've used to generate these photos. I'll also take one of your prompts to use that. So, okay. So this is one of the photo which says, so I, this is the prompt I gave. Is this visible at the end as well? Yes, please shout. I'm not able to see anything. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, so you say a lot of birds with a uh, lot of trees and flowers. It is a really good image, right? You, you agree? I'll, I'll show you more. Is this good? Is it says sharks inside water with coral. So understand, it has understood sharks. It has understood to take corals as well. And it has given me a really nice picture, right? I'm not sure if it is very clear to you. This is a 720p pic. Um, I've not done a very high res pic, right? Like a 4K or something like that. This is also one of my favorite, which is says living room made with modern architecture, right? You can, you can think, right? You, let's say you have a land, you want to build an architecture. You say, okay, show me what I could build. You don't need a proper architect who will do this for you. Right, living room made with an ancient architecture. So let's, let's say you have to do something like that. You can, you can build around this as well. So this is a one uh, prompt. You can try different, different prompt, get good results. 
and the next one will actually show you how deep and how precise your prompt could be and how well it is able to understand each and every of your needs right so you say mud house with waterfall in the swimming pool with sofa and a fireplace and it has got all right it's, there's a swimming pool there's a waterfall there's a sofa there's a fireplace and it's a mud house right so so use the 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 precise the prompt is the the better your output is is this good you like it okay this is also a good one which says <laughs> have you seen minions yeah okay i am a big minion fan by the way so minions on moon so <laughs> you you just say minions on moon yeah this is one of the new things which is which is using efficient net which is built on vit which is vision tensor uh, which when you say this okay this is the dog so it says okay it is 99.8% sure that it's a saint bernard do you guys have saint bernards here i'm not sure have you seen this dog okay then you say okay what what image is this right i have not trained a single image i've just tuned the model it's a transformer model and i've just uh, told okay what image what is this and it says it is 79% sure it's vulture so in ml anything above 65 70% it's as good as true okay so i'll show you this demos as well from my laptop i think it will be better maybe i'll just show it here uh, till the time they are fixing it so you say add copy generation right so uh, the text is not visible here so what i have done is i have just taken iphone 14 i just took the first line whatever is available on the wikipedia and i pasted it and i said okay i have to now generate ads around this so what it has done right so if you read the first one it, it's scarcity so around scarcity is it's, uh, it's trying to tell iphone 14 is selling out fast so act now before it's too late right so it's it's creating a scarcity you say exclusivity right the iphone 14 is only for the most discerning buyers right so that's how you can create ads so easily i have to just give one line about iphone 14 and it's so many it's in fact there is more i think it was around 10 types of different things it could could build with just one single line this is a no awesome one which says pirate talk so let's say you say hi friend how are you and you say how would a pirate talk like this right so it says ar i be doing well thank you kindly for asking how you be this fine day like this is how a pirate talk right and it is able to understand that so it's called impersonification i have recently also published this in the google cloud generative ai uh, jupyter notebook as well uh, on github yeah so you can check that out as well so it's able to understand right? so, so you say full sail ahead so ahoy ahoy there all these things right so it is able to understand all of those things reply back uh, with with your better understanding about the person then you do object classification so let's say i just have given this much of my text to the to the model uh, and i told what is the category of the object so i and that was and i gave him this categories i only want my answer to be in this categories i spoke about this right text classification something like that so you say re recliner and it's able to say chair everybody knows recliner right in the movie theaters the last one uh, i don't know if uh, if you, do you guys know jersey cow anyone yes no okay i think it's not popular here we have something in india called jersey cow and you just say jersey and you'll see you'll see it's a response from the model is cow i'm sure everybody knows husky dog right okay so when you say husky it says dog okay so this is one of the text i have given so in in context i just copied everything from harry potter and pasted it to my model and i told this is the context now i'll ask you questions around this right so i ask name the characters so it says uh, harry potter and his friend hermione uh, right it is able to understand that that i am asking about the characters in the whole wikipedia page right so it's not only i have given this text if my jupyter notebook could have been working i could have shown you that as well maybe in some time i'll show you 
Um, and also questions like estimated worth of Harry Potter books, right? So it says it is around $25 billion. So it's just good to you know, have a look and uh, you know, clap about this, but let's say in real life scenario, you have a long document, 100 pages, 200 pages, 500 pages, doesn't matter. Just give that document as your context to your model and ask any question that you have around it. It's like building a chatbot on a PDF, right? That's a very uh, good use case. I had solved this like five years ago. <laughs> I know it was so tough, it took me like one month or so to build it. Here I could have built it in maybe 10 minutes. So that's a really good use case. Um, so email writing, I, I got, I, like I told, right? In the last one month, I have not written a single email on my own. I just use, write me an email to thanking the participant to listening to me. So thank you, this is the email for you. And uh, one more was, how, how do I write social media posts, right? So it's also give me generative AI as the future of creativity. So I gave him a long text which says, you've given talk around generative AI using model garden and generative AI studio. And this has the talks text here. So I just have to copy this, paste it, I'm done, right? So uh, people who are trying to increase their followers on Twitter um, or LinkedIn, they're trying to, you know, be as consistent as possible. Think of a talk or something title you want to talk about to your followers today. Ask, copy, paste, you're done. It, it will take five minutes for you, right? And you can also remove few things that you don't want. I've just kept everything that I got from the model. So that's a really good use case, right? Are you guys doing this, by the way? Yes, nice. Okay, so this is general question answering. So I asked who's the president of US, it says Joe Biden. Then I asked what is his height? So it remembers, okay, I'm talking about Joe Biden. And then it says, okay, six feet, one inch. And then I also keep on asking him, okay, what is his wife name? So it says Jill Biden, right? It's able to keep the context, I could have gone way ahead and it will still keep, uh, keep on understanding that I'm still talking about Joe Biden, right? I don't know, why are, why are you guys like laughing? <laughs> Is there something funny here? <laughs> okay, so, so this is one of the good use case. As a student, I think it will be way, way uh, useful for you. So in the first one you say, write a SQL query to get max salary of employees from all departments. So it writes the SQL query there, right? You don't have to worry, it just says save max salary. But now you say, okay, I want it from the each department. So it is now able to understand, okay, for each department I'll have to do group by. And it just assumes that there is a department ID in the, uh, in, the, in the table. Now you say, okay, each department and get the department name from the department table. So you'll have to get the department ID, you have to do the join and then have to get the department name. A bit complex, right? But it is easily able to get it. And not only that, if you see it says as E, as D, which, which means it's doing the aliasing for you so that your code or your query looks as precise, as good as a human would write it. Have you guys tried this one? Okay, so not a lot of people, right? So my, my, my whole talk is about, you know, what all things you could do. Uh, instead of building LLMs, you should focus on how to use the LLMs. That will be actually useful for you. Thank you, but no, I'll, I'll still have demos. Don't, don't clap, please, I'm still here. <laughs> I have 12 minutes. Can we get this fixed, please? Yeah, okay, thank you. So this was the one I was showing around ad copy generation. If you look, look at the code, right? This is what's more important. All this demo and all was okay. But if you look at the code, it's hardly, I'm, I'm just importing few things. Uh, this is the uh, function that I'm using. You just make the, cop copy the function. You just initiate model, a, a lot of few things here. And you just say, okay, this is this is the main part wherein you say for each of the following categories, uh, and I give product description as this one, the iPhone 14, and it, it will write. So categories, create a three one sentence copies using product description provided, right? So it is easily able to create ad, ad copies here. Title generation is one of the nice things. I spoke about few short prompting, right? So here you say, okay, this is the article, this is the title. This is the article, this is the title. So you are training him to understand, okay, what is the kind of output I'm looking for? And then uh, you give him, okay, this is the title, and then you say the title of the above article can be. Right, it's so easy, it's just a Python code. You can easily integrate in your own code, use it, you don't need BARD. I think someone was asking, 
uh, is there an API way to get to BART, right? Why do you need an API way? You just, you just use the uh, Python code, right? You don't need an API as such. But there is uh, there's something called Makersuit. If someone is not so good with Python, he can use that, right? And at the back end, it is using the same exact model which Bard is uh, using, right? So it's called text bison. If you have seen here, it's using text bison. So that's the exact same model which Bard is using. Uh, it's, it's completely. Pirate talk is something I showed you. Chat agent summarization is one of my favorites one, wherein you just give him the chat and you say summarize the following conversation from the agent's perspective. So it also understand that one. So you say agent, customer, agent, customer. They talked about a few things. That's a really long chat. Let's say you are a manager of a, a support industry or something like that, and you have all the trans transcripts. Put in the transcripts, and you understand, OK, uh, what, what the guy was talking about, right? That's a really good use case. This one I already showed you. Text analysis is wherein uh, I already showed you. Yeah? Harry Potter, I gave the context of Harry Potter, and then I was asking questions around, around it. Email writing, social media posts, general question answering. SQL queries. Ah, by the way, it's not only about SQL queries, right? So in the in this one, I use the exact same text and I just put MongoDB. It's also easily able to get the MongoDB query. H how many of you know MongoDB? Just raise your hand. Everybody, yes. How many of you know Elasticsearch? If I could have written Elasticsearch, it will easily be able to get me a Elasticsearch text as well. Um, anybody want to? Okay, maybe I'll just open this one. I still have eight minutes. Uh, anybody wants to try out that uh, text to image model? Anybody has a prompt that you want to try out? I'll be more than happy to try one model. Anyone? Yeah, please tell me a prompt. Please don't keep it vulgar or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Unicorn? Yeah. Unicorn SpongeBob. OK. <laughs> I'm not sure what, what are you imagining. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Collab. For uh, all of you who don't know, you can try out Collab. It's free, um, and it's easy to use. It's you can also get GPUs if you want. Let's see if we get the GPU. I actually had all this set up earlier, but it's gone now. So, OK. By the way, I, this is something I was trying out. OK, I deleted that. OK. But something I was trying, crocodile in suit. So you say unicorn, unicorn sponge bob. OK. Let's see what it does. It will take around one minute or so. Uh, but. If you see the code, right, it's not like a big rocket thing, right? I'm sure uh, like it's just get Kandinsky, you import few things. Here were just two lines to do pip install. And uh, you give the prompt. This is the same code you can just copy paste if you want. It's already there on GitHub as well. Um, that's it. It will display the image for you. And this is I have written so that I delete all the images as soon as I get it. So it will download this, all of those. OK, I think it's taking a lot of time. OK, sure. Anyway, uh, this is one more thing I wanted uh, anyone else to try. Do you want to try out an image? Anyone has an image or an animal image that you want to try out and see if, if this actually works? And I'm not faking it. Anyone? No animal? Sorry? Be louder. No, nobody is going to shout you or anything. Anybody want to try out? No? Sorry? <laughs> I don't understand what's it about. Yeah, please say. OK. okay. I think you don't want to see this. Sorry? Yeah, don't be shy. Come on, please. OK, maybe just we'll wait for it. Anyone has any questions around this, by the way? I still have five minutes. Everybody has understood or not understood this? If you can tell me by yes or no. No is also fine if you don't. Yes? 
okay how many of you want to try this out do you want to sh- do you want me to share this ppts or no uh, not ppt i'll share you the uh, the notebook i don't have it uploaded till now but i'll show sh- definitely share this yeah it's downloading actually i lost the the connection that i had earlier else you know it, it would have not taken so much time any questions you have please ask yeah training you're saying training the text python is it currently they are not allowing to train the text python uh, but you can have a langchain uh, pipeline wherein you put something in in the start it will understand create a prompt according to um, this one the uh, the tax text python and then that's how you could use it but you cannot directly change text python as of now um does that answer your question and if you want as you are building a mobile application you can still use this um sdk right so it's available in python as of now but uh, you can have a api which which gives a call to it and you just write the api in in python so th- there are no cons in fact so what's happening here is bard and uh, this vertex ai right it is using the same model in the in the back end right and so wh- what's happening here is this is built for building application bard is someone let's say who don't know how to build an application but still wants to use generative ai that's for for them to use the bard but if you know how to code i think most of us and then it's way better to use vertex ai and that's just one of the things in vertex ai there are a lot of other things that have been newly launched as well in vertex ai maybe if you want i can show you how it looks in vertex ai how many of you have a gcp account please raise your hand very few what what is stopping you from creating a gcp account credit card is it so if you come to this vertex ai uh, and then you will able you will be able to see model garden and then there is something called generative ai studio as well vision is something just launched yesterday uh, yeah i think we have should have worked but if a live dev won't doesn't, doesn't fail then what right so h- how many of you seen this generative ai studio so what you can do here is if you go to language you will see so many i just showed you like maybe 5 10 examples right there are more than 50 or 60 examples that are there and you can try out each of them right and if you want to create your own example you can just say text prompt uh, and let's say you want to cre- create your own example you can do that as well here and you can also save that so that's a really good uh, thing that google has come up with um if you want to try out i only have one and a half minute let's see if this works i'll set my bad case i also have another question uh, yeah yeah so imagine i make a mobile app and i use this uh for that uh, mobile app where imagine i'm providing like a saas service so can i use like an api uh from the google cloud you know in this model to connect to the mobile app yes you can either use your own let's say you deployed this exact code on cloud function and you will give a call to your cloud function as there is something called maker suit which is using bard so from maker suit you can give a call to bard essentially is the same call and you you'll use it that way but there you'll have less control over let's say you have to change the temperature or all of those things i have not got in depth about that but let's say you want to make few modifications in bard or from maker suit you will ha- not have that kind of control but uh, using vertex ai you will have all those control yeah thank you i think 
it's my bad luck right so i only have 20 seconds thank you guys for listening to me if you have any questions please reach out i'm sorry the demo did not go well thank you thank you vibha for that interesting session to give away the token of appreciation i would like to invite keshan sodimana former country engineering consultant for google